In this video, we're going to take a look at solving some absolute value inequalities. I am going to assume that you have worked with um, regular inequalities prior to this and that you have associated less than and less than or equal to with an and and greater than or greater than or equal to with or. Basically, we're going to have two scenarios with these absolute value inequalities. Case number one, we could have the absolute value of some expression u and then that is less than c when c is a positive number. So if it's less than c, the absolute value bars are less than c. Well, with it being a less than, we know it's an and, and we can automatically set up our inequality to solve by putting whatever's on the inside of the absolute value bars here in the middle, and then taking this value and writing it with a negative and a positive, and then solving that inequality. Um, this also works for when this is less than or equal to, so I didn't think we needed to write that out a second time. Our case number two would be when we have the absolute value of an expression and it's greater than some value c, with c being a positive number. All right, with the greater, the greater symbol right there, we know it's an or. So we, are, we know that we're going to be able to take the expression inside those absolute value bars and write it, that expression greater than c or... When we write our second one, we will flip the inequality from what it originally is, and we will take the opposite sign here, so then we would have u is less than negative c. And again, this also works for when it's greater than or equal to. These two types of cases probably need to be memorized in the sense that this is an and, and this is how you set your and up to solve it, and this one is an or, and this is how you set up your or equation. And keeping in mind that this works for when this constant number um, is a C, is a positive, when that constant is a positive. And also, the absolute value bars do have to be isolated. So you can't have anything being multiplied in front of it or added or subtracted on the other side. All right, and then if you have less than a positive number, then this applies. Same thing over here, greater than a positive number, then this applies. So we're going to take a look at some examples. <clears throat> All right, we will take case number one here where we've got a set of absolute value bars that are isolated and it's less than three. Three is a positive number. All right, with it being less than, I know this is an and. So I know that the way I can go to work this out is to set it up with a negative three on the left. What's on the inside of those absolute value bars will be on the inside and my positive three will be on the outside. So I'm gonna set it up negative three is less than x minus four is less than three. All right, the easiest way to then go about solving this would be I'm trying to solve for x, so I'm going to add 4, and I'm going to add it to all three locations. So I'm going to add 4 here, I'm going to add 4 here, and I'm going to add 4 over here. Minus 4 plus 4 crosses out, which is what we want. All right, and then over here, doing the math here, a negative 3 plus 4 is going to give me a 1. Less than, the only thing left there in the center is that x, and then adding 3 and 4 over there, I'm going to get a 7. So I have my and compound inequality right there as my answer. I can also uh, do this in interval notation, and I can graph it. So if I were to look at um, interval notation, so let's abbreviate interval notation right here. My interval notation, because those are both less than brackets, I would have... Um, curvy bracket 1 to 7 curvy bracket. If I looked at this on a number line, and again using the interval notation, then on my number line I would have the 1 over here on the left, I would have the 7 over here on the right, and since to indicate that I have the less than inequality symbols there, then I would make this a curvy, and I would make this curvy to correspond with my interval notation, and I would shade in the center because that's where my x is in this solution. All right, if um, you are a middle school student and you're doing this, this would be more for a high school or college student. If you are in middle school or early algebra one where interval notation has not yet been introduced, then you would take this compound inequality, which is an and, and you would graph it. And it's common to see um, the open dots and closed dots early in Algebra 1 or with a middle school setting. So then you might see the same graph with an open dot and an open dot and shaded in the middle. Okay, both of those number lines are the same. This is introduced very early. This is introduced later. All right, for this next example, we've got 
an absolute value inequality that's a little more stepped up. The absolute value bars are not isolated. It's got a plus four on this left hand side. I cannot implement this rule on how to go about solving this until I isolate those absolute value bars. So that's what I'm going to do first. I am going to subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. Positive 4 minus 4 then is going to cross out. So then I'm going to be left with the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to 5 minus 4. It's going to give me a 1 right there. Now I have an isolated set of absolute value bars less than or equal to 1. So because it's less than or equal to, I know it's an AND. So I know I can set it up with the same manner. I will take this number that is on the right hand side, which is positive. I will write it with a negative and a positive and take this center x plus 2 and put it in my center. So negative 1 <clears throat> less than or equal to x plus 2 less than or equal to 1. All right, now from here, I'm going to solve it the exact same way I solved over here. I've got x plus 2. I want to solve for x and do the opposite right there. So I'm going to subtract 2 in the middle. I'm going to subtract 2 on the right-hand side. I'm going to subtract 2 on the left-hand side. Those 2's in the middle are going to fall out. Doing the math over here, I'm going to get a negative 3 is less than or equal to. The only thing left in the center there is an x. Doing the math here, less than or equal to a negative 1. So then there is my compound answer for my absolute value inequality. Again, I could show this using some interval notation. All right, so using some interval notation with it being less than or equal to, that means I would be using square brackets to denote this. So I would have square bracket negative 3 to negative 1. If I were to use the interval notation on a number line, my negative 3 would be on the left, my negative 1 would be on the right, and I would again use those square brackets on the number line if I was doing an interval notation number line with the shading in the middle. And again, if I was a middle school student or an early Algebra 1 student, and I might be using the open dot close dot scenario, then on my negative 3 and on my negative 1, I would have a closed dot because that means those points are included and then I would again shade in the middle. <clears throat> okay, so basically these number lines are the same. It's just at what point are you and what have you been taught in your math um, classes up to this point. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of more examples here. This time I'm going to be taking a look at a greater than 5 and a greater than or equal to 12. Again, notice that these numbers on the right are positive. So then this is going to guarantee me, since this number on the right is positive, then this is going to work. I know it's going to be an OR because I'm going to look at that original inequality symbol and tell that. Okay, so this one, the absolute value bars are already isolated. So I can immediately jump into how I'm going to solve this. The first time I write this um, inequality, I'm going to just basically leave off those absolute value bars. So I'm going to go 2x plus 3 is greater than 5. And then I'm going to do OR because I know it's an OR. <clears throat> when I write it the second time, I've got to remember to flip the inequality symbol and take the opposite number. So I'll have a 2x plus a 3, flip the inequality symbol, and make that a negative. <coughs> Excuse me. So those are your two main things. Okay, flip. Let's write flip here so we remember that. And then let's just write opposite sign there so we'll remember opposite sign. All right, now I have two nice little um, two-step equations here solved. All right, if I subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, I'm going to have a 2x is greater than 2. If I divide both sides by 2, I'll have x is greater than 1. I'm going to carry down that OR in between. <coughs> and on this side, again, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So 2x is less than, subtracting 3 here, I'll get a negative 8. Dividing both sides by that 2, I'll have x is less than negative 4. So there I have my OR answer to my inequality problem here. Now I can choose to... Um, write this in interval notation. I can choose to graph it on a number line. I can use the interval notation on the number line or I can use the open dot close dot things. On this one, um, I think I want to do the graph first. Okay, so let's put it on a number line. We know that negative 4 is smaller than negative 1, so 
my negative 4 needs to be on the left and my 1 needs to be on the right. Okay, they are both <coughs> less than, greater than signs right there, so I know I'm going to not want to include 1 and negative 4 in my answers. So if I'm using the interval notation number line, I would be using the curvy brackets. This says x is less than negative 4. The numbers to the left are less than negative 4, so I'll have my curvy bracket here, and I would shade everything to the left. Over here, x is greater than 1. I'm not including 1, so I've got that curvy bracket on there, and all the numbers that are greater than 1 then would be to the right, so I would be shading to the right. <clears throat> Again, if I was using open dots, the number line would look identical to this. I would still have negative 4 on the left, I would still have 1 on the right, and instead of the curvy brackets, then I would have the open dot, indicating that I was not going to include negative 4 in my answer, and again shaded to the left, and same thing for the 1 open dot, meaning I cannot include 1 in my answer, and shading to the right. <clears throat> Now, the reason that I wanted to do the number lines first this time is because if we take a look at this top number line here, this is going to make it real easy to write our interval notation. And we're going to have to use our union symbol to do that since we have two sections here. Um, keeping in mind that negative infinity is over here on the left and positive infinity is over here on the right. I've got two sections. So then I'll have negative infinity all the way up to negative 4 curvy bracket because that's what I used on my number line, union symbol to also include this over here on the right, curvy bracket 1 all the way up to positive infinity curvy bracket. So there is an OR with your interval notation. For this last example that I'd like to do, my uh, absolute value bars are not isolated. I have a plus 10 and I have it being multiplied by 2. So we're going to have to get rid of both of those before we can start the problem. So let's go ahead and subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. Those 10s will then go away. So then I'm going to have 2 absolute value 2x minus 3 greater than or equal to doing the subtraction there is going to give me a 2. Okay, now I need to divide both sides of that equation by 2, so let's go ahead and show that. The 2's will cross out on the left. 2 divided by 2 on the right then is going to give me a 1, so I'm going to have the absolute value of 2x minus 3 greater than or equal to 1. <clears throat> so now I have a set of absolute value bars that have been isolated. It's greater than or equal to 1. 1 is a positive number, so I know that it's going to be an OR, and I know how I can set this up. I'm going to break it up into two inequalities. I'm going to take the first inequality and write exactly what I see minus the bars. So I will have a 2x minus 3 greater than or equal to 1. Then I'm going to put my OR down. When I write it the second time, I have to flip the inequality symbol and take the opposite sign. So 2x minus 3, flip the sign, take the opposite sign on my number. So I'm flipping the inequality symbol. I'm taking the opposite sign. Okay, and again, a two-step equation, so this should be relatively easy to solve here. Add 3 to both sides. 2x greater than or equal to 4, x is greater than or equal to 2. Go ahead and write the OR down, solve this two-step equation, add 3 to both sides. I'll have a 2x less than or equal to, let's see, add 3, that's going to give me a 2. Divide both sides by 2, x is less than or equal to 1. So there is my answer written to my absolute value inequality. And again, we can do both number lines and interval notation. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and do the interval notation, uh, the number lines first, rather. So again, I'm going to take a look at the 1 and the 2. 1 is less than 2, so I need to put 1 on my number line first, and then 2 on the right-hand side. I've got the equals 2 part on both of these. That means I am going to include 2 and 1 in my solution. So if we were doing interval notation, I would put a square bracket on my negative 1. X is less than 1, so that would be the numbers to the left. I will be shading on the outside right here. <clears throat> X is greater than or equal to 2. Those numbers would be found over here. I want to include 2, so square bracket and shade to the right. As soon as you have that number line, if you needed to do a number line with the open and closed dots, 
All right, then the square brackets would indicate that I needed closed dots. So drawing that number line, I would have a one here, I would have a two here. We would need the closed dot to ensure that we were including one in our answer and everything to the left and the closed dot on two and shading everything to the right or greater than two. Interval notation, I would have to use my union for my interval notation answer. So again, keeping in mind that we have negative infinity over here and positive infinity over here. My interval notation will be curvy bracket, negative infinity, all the way up to one with a square bracket, union, doing this section of the number line, square bracket on the two, all the way up to positive infinity with a curvy bracket. <clears throat> so definitely just four little examples there of how you are going to deal with some um, inequalities when you have a positive number on that right hand side. Okay, so after you've isolated it, you got a positive number over there, then this is going to be pretty straightforward. You memorize which ones are ands and which ones are or. Definitely. Thanks.